na election observers nimesikia hapa wafadhili wa, 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 wa wetu wengine wamekuwa election observers na vitu kama hivyo na election observers na zenyewe zina limitations zake mimi nazijua nimekuwa watu election observers wanatoka hotelini wanazunguka pale wanarudi hotelini wana observe election ya <laughs> au ndio kweli si semi kwamba wasiwepo lakini sisi tunajua hali halisi ya mambo yanayotokea usiku sasa watu wanaokimbia na maboksi watu wanao staff maboksi au wanawaona sangapi eh. na mimi ni ipokuwa moja wa mataifa Nairobi wakati wa 2007 election in Kenya mimi I was in charge of the UN there I was the director general of the United Nations Center at Nairobi so I was the political representative of the UN system in Nairobi when an election broke down so the crisis which was going to throw Kenya into a civil war I found myself at the center of that crisis now because taking advantage of being a native of this place I had to convince the rest of the international system including the big powers the United States and others that look here we did not observe the election so we don't know what happened that was my position with all respect to the observers I said okay we didn't secure the votes I didn't say that Kibaki didn't win but I say we don't know the winner <laughs> and that made the day finally that position once it was then endorsed by the influential governments it was down the line then we were able to rescue kenya from descending into a crisis it was going to be a crisis the current president ruto you see he was the one who was leading the struggle on the streets actually at the un we are calling him general ruto so what am I saying? I'm saying that democracy is something that we must domesticate it. So particularly for women to make progress, we must go into the culture. Now you have advanced culture, like our friend from the Nordic countries, where I studied there, I landed in Sweden as, as a bride, actually I was married to a diplomat. But I found that women were free, they could do anything, they were very accommodative. I, I, had, a, I had a baby, I could take my baby into the meeting room like this one. So this, this is an environment that promotes women to make progress and finally to lead. But even there, even in Sweden, I think you will agree with me, even in Sweden, it was a struggle. And as for America, where it all started, I, Wyoming, the, the, the people meeting in 1869 at Wyoming, the delegate said that what they asked, because the poor men, people are not aware that, initially poor men were not even allowed to vote. So it was really a gentleman's business, as I said. But I remember, uh, for, for, the, for the women, it is very difficult for us. The, you see, the, the, the suppression of women is more entrenched than the, the suppression on racial lines. If you want to know the indicator, the, the, the American uh, black, the African Americans or the, the American male was able to vote 50 years out before, ahead of the American white woman. 50 years. So the male were able to overcome the, the racial divide, they were able to vote, but the, Africa, the, the women were able to vote only in the context of their contribution in the First World War. After the First World War, the women had been running the factories, it was very difficult to keep them out of the process. Now, in this country, we have a problem here, and I would like to underscore that one as point of discussion. Because our, our constitution says, if you want to buy for a position, you must join a political party. And that, that is for everybody. So here we have party politics. So I can say that here we are a democratic, a democratic country, but in a party dictatorship. It is a party dictatorship because why shouldn't an individual candidate be allowed to buy for a position? And I can tell you, and as a, as a retired uh, parliamentarian, I know that un, unless, and I normally tweet around this issue, this is a very critical issue. Because within political parties, and I'm, I'm happy that they are represented here. So you cannot say you are going to promote women in election if the women are discriminated inside their political parties. Th this, this, this is a problem. And I believe that if we are able to overcome this problem, and I think really I would like to make an appeal 
This is one reform that President Samia, if it pleases her, it, she could make this reform to allow private candidates. This, this can be done by, I'm sure we can get two states majority in the, in, in the parliament, the current parliament. If this thing was made, what, uh, it would help women a lot. But it would also help men. And it would help Tanzania in terms of improving the quality of leadership of political leaders. Because at the moment, uh, we have Nuchawa. Unasema nini? Nuchawa, eh? Kwa sababu kama unaweza ukaruhusu ngombea binafsi kusimama. Kwa ma vya siyasa habita imarika sana. Habita potea. Au siyo. Habita potea. Mbona marikani habita potea. So either you are republican or a democrat. You can try to be independent. But you are that liberty that you can be independent. That is what improves the political party. Na hapa, unyanyasaji wa viongozi, wa tarajiwa, unatokana na kunyimu wa uhuru wa kugombea kama watu binafsi. Na unajua huko wana, wananchi wanapopiga kura, na mi nimepigiwa kura, wananchi wapigi chama, wanapigia mtu. Kwa hiyo vya 